Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the 4th quarter 2017 residential market update. We are now in January 2018. So let's review what happened in 2017. It started before 2017 when at the end of 2016, developers were already holding back their launches in preparation for launches after Chinese New Year of 2017. So there was a build up and pre-marketing activities property agents going out to the streets to drum up interest in new launches leading up to Chinese New Year and when the new launches were opened for sale from after Chinese New Year up to March, April and May there were a lot of visitors to the show flats some of the developers with unsold units also joined in with promotional campaigns as well as deferred payment schemes we had a lot of interest from the public that was also supported by analysts upgrading the market data as well as calling for a Singapore residential market to have already hit a bottom. In April, in fact, one of the large financial institutions published a research report saying that Singapore residential prices have hit the bottom and will in fact double in prices by the year 2030. This was justified based on the fact that household sizes are shrinking, there are more and more single person households and that our GDP growth will continue to be strong between the years 2017 to 2030. By September, on the back of very strong participation of the developers in government land sales with three plots of land sold above a billion dollars, as well as a few successful cases of on-block transactions. The financial institutions were also upgrading their numbers and Morgan Stanley then came up to update their research to say that in the year 2018, prices will be up by another 10%. The on-block craze has driven the market into a bit of a frenzy. There were a few significant HUDC sites such as Unosville and Tampanese Court that were sold at very good prices. Now there's an expectation also that the recipients, um, the overnight millionaires of these on-block sales would be buying properties subsequently and therefore driving up the new sales prices or better still driving up the resale market prices even further. So, towards the end of 2017, all these factors came in together. Research analysts were upgrading the market. Property agents were going around promoting new properties. The whole market looked like it is very hot. Everybody seems to say that we have hit a market inflection point. Property prices have seen a bottom and that it is higher prices from 2018 onwards. So, is that true? Let's take a look at what is the private residential price index from government sources. Now, what do the official figures tell us about the private residential market last year? Despite the exuberance in the new launch sales in the beginning of the year, as well as expectation that the market is turning around and in the second-hand market, activities were starting to pick up, the index dropped in the first two quarters by a total of 0.7%. That brought the total number of consecutive quarters of decline to 15, starting from the end of 2013. However, in the middle of the year, especially with the on-block sales such as Unosville going through, uh, market sentiments really did improve. And so for the third and the fourth quarter last year, we saw an increase in the index of 0.7 percentage points per quarter. That wrapped up the entire 2017 with a positive price growth of 0.7 percentage point for 2017, meaning that yes, we have indeed turned the corner in as far as the private residential index is concerned. But is it the same for the public housing sector? So looking at the HDB resale price index, it is still trending down. And in fact, for the whole year last year, public housing prices dropped by 1.5%.
This is a consecutive 17 quarters of decline with the exception of one of the quarters in the middle that where the prices went up by 0 0.1 percentage point. Last year, since around February to March, there were discussions by the minister as well as by the media and members of the public about the state of the 99-year leasehold of HDB flats. And the minister warned that um, the public and the investors shouldn't expect HDB to be able to do the selective on block relocation scheme for all old HDB flats. That put a concern into buyers of HDB flats about the age of HDB flats that they should be investing in, given that there will be loan restrictions as well as CPF usage restrictions for older HDB properties. Then let's look at the other segment that is a little bit smaller but still may make a difference. That's the executive condominium segment. The executive condominium scheme was stopped for a few years when the market was down post Lehman crisis. But when the market started to pick up again in 2010, we saw a few plots of land sold by the government that were allocated for executive condominium sales. And the earliest ones completed in the third quarter of 2013. Now, from this chart, we see that there's an increasing trend of executive condominiums that were completed and then left vacant. In fact, up to the latest available numbers in the third quarter of 2017, there were about 3,000 vacant units in the executive condominium segment. These are new executive condominiums that came with a five-year minimum occupation period. So why are so many of them left vacant? So they probably bought by investors who went after the CPF housing grant, went for the discounted prices, and then hoping to make a profit later on as the five-year minimum occupation period expired. So expect the first wave of resale executive condominiums, which are still relatively new because they have only been completed for five years, starting from the third quarter of 2018. So there will be up to a thousand units if these were investors' units that would be coming into the market for to compete with the resale private residential properties. Then, what may be our outlook for the year 2018? What can we look forward to given all this exuberance in the year 2017 and what happened behind us? Will the momentum of 2017 sustain all the way through 2018? Now, here is what we think might happen. Now, our view is that there is at least another good six months for this buoyant mood to continue in the market. On block sales of private residential properties to developers will continue on at least for the moment, especially since many of the developers have got strong balance sheets with a lot of cash in the bank. Backed by very low interest rates, developers' activities in the government land sales segment as well as the on-block uh, area could see land prices continue to trend up. HDB, on the other hand, would remain a split market. The um, older HDB flats as well as the poorer located HDB flats may continue to see downward pressure on prices, but again, we could see new record high numbers of HDB flats in the prime locations crossing the million dollar mark. The mass market residential prices may also be challenged given that completions will still continue plus HDB's new supply of 17,000 flats may swing some buyers away into the lower price HDB segment. So overall, I would say signals remain mixed as population growth is also sort of flattened off, employment is still ch facing challenges. And for those of us who are still in the market looking to buy, our recommendation is focus on freehold properties that are well built within the districts 9, 10, 11. Those are still rare and difficult to come by.
Thank you very much. And we hope to see you in our next installment of Market Update.